Spectrum of Sound. Spectrum of Sound, featuring gospel quartet music with Ronica and the Blazing Stars. Hear my conversation with Ronica as she expounds on the history of the group, her love for gospel quartet music, and more. That's happening on Spectrum of Sound this Saturday, 5 to 5 p.m. on WIHS. Me and Jesus go a long way back, uh, <laughs> myself. Spectrum of Sound, good uh, late afternoon to you if you're in the East Coast. Good early afternoon if you're on the West Coast. I'm Jerry Williams. 55 minutes of my conversation with Ronica Bowers of uh, Ronica and the Blazing Stars intertwined with their music, and that's happening right now. I spoke with her a few days ago. Talk about yes. the history of the group. Take me all the way back. Oh, my goodness. History of the group. Let's, let's go back. History of the group. This was a vision. And I have to have to always, and people always say, why you always talk about your father? Because this was a vision of my father. In my eyes, I never saw myself singing. Him and God discovered me. <laughs> so my dad sung with a group called, my dad was not a singer. He played a lead guitar for a group called the Spiritual Soul Seekers out of Cleveland, mm. North Carolina, because I do know it's a, it's a Spiritual Soul Seekers now. But it was an older group from Cleveland, North Carolina, and he played for them for years. We traveled, when I said we, me, my brother, and my mom, we traveled with the spiritual soul seekers. I was that one that sat on the front row with the tamarind. I didn't know anything about quartet singing. I didn't know genre of music back then. I just know I had my tamarind, and I played the tamarind, and I would just stand up and, and sing. So as time went on, I would hear my dad say, I want to get my children together, and I want to travel with my children. So he left. The Spiritual Soul Seekers, I don't know the year. He left the Spiritual Soul Seekers, and he went with the group in Statesville, North Carolina, still playing the lead guitar. And the name of that group was the Mighty Blazing Stars of the Carolinas or either North Carolina. I can't remember. It's been a long time ago. He stayed with them for a long time. The lead singer, which at that time was Jeff Minor, he had to leave and go to the military. Well, in doing that, what the group didn't know, my dad would come home and practice me being the lead singer. I tell people my daddy was T Ike and I was Tina. <laughs> so I think he was grooming me at that time because, like I said, his vision was to get his children. So this was the perfect opportunity. The lead singer was le leaving. Well, something happened along the way. I was about the age of 16 years old. The background singer wasn't there. So my dad like, okay, my daughter can sing. They're like, huh? So I stepped in singing background at first. But then when the lead singer left and went to the military, it was like, okay, she can sing. So they put me a female lead singer with a bunch of men. Was I terrified? Yes, I was. <laughs> the first program we did, i never forget, we were at Price High School in, in Salisbury, North Carolina. I was terrified, a 19-year-old girl, Singing to, to me, two or three hundred people at that time, that was a crowd full of people, and I am nervous to death. I don't know if you know, but people know me as taking my shoes off, and people always ask me, why do I take my shoes off? Well, the answer to that question is, my dad knew I was scared. I went to my dad. I'm like, Dad, I am. I, I, when I, I got high heel shoes on, I'm like, Dad, I am scared to death. He said, what do you mean? He said, get out there and just do what I know you can do. I'm like, Dad, I'm scared. He said, well, what do you need to do to get comfortable? I said, well, first of all, I can't sing in these high heel shoes. I, I, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to fall. And I said, you know I move when I sing. I don't be still. He said, take them off. I said, take them off? He said, take the shoes off and go out there and do what I know you can do. I took the shoes off, and I have been singing flat-footed ever since then. <laughs> and the rest of it. When I come to you. Oh, no. 
And I was going to ask you that question. I really had yeah. that question in mind. You beat me to the punch. Yeah. I've seen a lot of your videos. Your shoes are off. And my question <laughs> to you was going to be, at what point do you yes. feel compelled in the middle of a song to kick your shoes off? What drives you to do that? <laughs> okay, you know, my mom said, now listen, you are a lady. You need to at least go out there with your shoes on. Mm -hmm. And then my dad would say, well... She don't feel comfortable until the shoes come off. Right. So in my mind, I said, okay, I'm going to get through the first song, at least try to get through the first song with my shoes on. Mm -hmm. But it, I, it don't always work that way because it's like, I, I don't know, I, I don't, I can't explain it, but it's something about taking my shoes off. And I am a country girl yep. and no, I don't like shoes, <laughs> but it's something about taking my shoes off and just, and, and being flat footed and just doing what I, what God has allowed me to do. CNG. and raised in a Christian home. We can't get into heaven on our parents' faith. What point do you recall Christ really impacting your life personally? Well, it was a point in my life, I don't know the exact year, where when I say I lost everything, I lost everything. Again, you have to understand, even though I was going to church, <laughs> in church every thing like every day, I was young. Because I was in church didn't mean I was always doing church. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Call myself being grown, and I went out on my own and, and got my own. Got to a point where I lost everything. At this time, I had just opened up my own business, our own um, daycare facilities. I had just opened up one of my facilities. I started out of my home. I opened up a facility, 
And right at Christmas, I lost everything that I had. At that point, I had to learn to lean and depend on Jesus to do what I had been singing, what God could do.
again, she's saying, now listen, you out here singing about me, telling me, telling the people what you know, they need to trust in me. I'm a provider. I'm a healer. I'm this. I'm that. All right, let me see where your faith lies. At that point where I lost everything that I had, and he, not now one time, did I go without food. Not now one time. He provided me with everything I needed. At that point, I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm ready. Let's go do this thing. Which reminds me of one of your songs, Can't Make Me Doubt It. because <laughs> I know too much about it. <laughs> yeah. Talk about that song. Again, let me go back. Understand, I was groomed to do this thing. I was very young. Like I say, I sung with the group at the age of 16. The songs that we sing, I did not write, not now one of. So singing those songs at that time, I was just singing those songs. But life, life brings about a change. And now I understand the songs 
that I've been singing for the last 10 or 15 years. You have to go through. Something has to happen to get an understanding of the songs. Now when I sing, you can't make me doubt him. I went through trials. I went through tribulations. And now I have something to tell you why you can't make me doubt him. Because he's done so much for me, you can't make me doubt him. Cover me. I heard the song Cover Me, you singing that Cover Me, and you mentioned about the pandemic. And uh, so yeah. what, was, what was that experience like like for the Blazing Stars, and how did you guys navigate through that? We, um, it was hard. We, um, right before the pandemic had came, now you're talking about dates, we were booked every, just about every weekend. If we wasn't doing Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we were booked to do at least, a Saturday and Sunday of every month before the pandemic hit. We had just recorded the um, that particular project right before the pandemic hit, and then the pandemic hit, and it's like, oh, my God. So that's one of those projects that probably didn't get out the way it needed to have gotten out because it was right there at the pandemic. So what we're going to try to do is revamp it again, um, and see, and see how it works. Some of your gospel quartet influences coming up. Oh my goodness. In my house, I heard the Pilgrim Jubilee. I heard 
Tommy Ellison and the Five Singing Stars. I heard the Valenez. I heard the Swanee Quintet. I heard Slim and Supreme Angels. I heard them every day at my house. And if you listen to our music, you probably would say, oh, God, that's a little bit of the Pick on Jubilees in there. That's a little bit of the Valenez in there. You probably could, will hear it. Or you will hear James Brown, because my daddy, uh, before he started playing gospel, he played rock and roll, and he played jazz. Can I tell you about a man I know? He sits up high, but he looks down low. Oh, my goodness. Talk about that song, Mission. Oh, man. Mission, my son wrote that song. I don't know what his, when he wrote the song, I don't know what he was thinking. <laughs> but when I sing the song, my mission is to, is to get to heaven. I'm, I, am I perfect? No. But I'm striving every day to, to, to walk through them gates. Mm -hmm. My mind is going back. 
to a church called Mount Zion Board Quarters. Yeah. Boy, I tell you, they quartetted from sun up to sundown. I can remember hearing one of the lead singers telling the drummer, boy, hit that note. Then I heard something like this. Listen, listen. Lord, Lord, I'm on.
that's a great song. I love it. And, and you really know how to drive a quartet song. That's what I'm so in, impressed with. You you show that you're a seasoned lead gospel quartet singer. You really drive it, and your son's in the pocket, and the background is tight. Everything is tight and right, like I said earlier. And I really appreciate what you guys do. You sound great. Keep doing Thank what you. you're doing. So you're on a mission. Yes. Because heaven is my home. It's another I one of your songs. You. I just told you. <laughs> I'm on a mission because I was striving to make it in. Did I not tell you that? You Heaven did. is my home. And I'm done. The very best. Have a favorite song that you guys sing? What's your favorite song? I, I do. My favorite song is Lord is in Your Hands. Yes, that slow one. <laughs> yes, that's my favorite song. And why is that? Getting older and, and realizing life every day. It, the, the song the song is, is it was relevant 20 years ago and it's relevant now. We have to say, you know, Lord is in your hands. We you know, sometimes we at a point where we just don't know what else to do. I mean, we done tried everything that we know how to try, which not that's not the way we're supposed to do it anyway. Everything, you know, we're supposed to turn everything over to God, but we are human. And at some point, you just have to get down on your knees and say, listen, Lord, it's in your hands. Oh, glory to God today. 
I've been singing for a long time. And I ain't got tired yet. I found out that whatever I might be going through, all I gotta do is say, Lord is in your hands. Can I sing that song for you? Listen. There's been times when I I felt in doubt, but I didn't give up. Even though I felt like giving out It seemed like stumbling blocks Get all in my way Oh, and the road, it got longer The more I pray But when it seemed like I I couldn't make it alone I kept right on, kept right on praying I told you. Oh!
I don't know what else to do. It's, it's yours. Take it. I'm done with it. And you really ministered that song, too, because I've seen um, multiple times, you know, on on video of you singing that song. Yeah, that's a great song. Oh, man, it's, it's a powerful song. Just the other, uh, I can, I'm going to talk about it. Just last month, I had, I had went to the, to the doctor, and they had given me some bad news. I went through tests. I went through tests. They were telling me I had to have surgery, and I opened up my Bible, and I started saying, you know what, Lord, it's in your hands. You know, I preach, and I tell people, you know, if you pray, don't worry. If you worry, don't pray. It was one of those tests that God turned back on me, and I'm like, okay, Lord, you know, not my will, but your will. I went back on uh, yesterday. I went back on yesterday, and everything they found in December, how about they can't find it right now? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> That's all you can say. I hollered and screamed, and they, the doctor's <laughs> like, I don't understand. I said, what you mean? Don't, that you, you don't understand. God did this. She's like, do you see this? I said, yeah, I see it. She said, do you see this one? I'm like, yes. She said, where is it? I said, it's not there. It's not there. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, it's in your hands. And that's exactly what I said. Lord, it's in your hands. Not my will, but your will. Veronica, God bless you. It was a, it was a pleasure meeting you. Like I said, I'd, I'd love uh, to see you out here in, in Connecticut. I'm going to put some feelers out and and let it be known to the Gospel Quartet community out here and see if that could, if we can make that happen and, and you get a phone call sometime in the near future or something like that to bring you and the blazing stars out here so you can blaze up some things, you know? <laughs> uh, we, would, we would love it. But before I go, Mr. Williams, can I just say thank you for allowing me to be on your platform just to uh, let your audience know a little bit about Monica and the Blazing Stars. There's this little, this little group from the, from the country that like praising God, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much just for allowing me to, to share your platform. You're quite welcome. From Mooresville, North Carolina, she's Ronica Bowers of Ronica and the Blazing Stars. Check them out. You can just go to YouTube, type in the name, and how else can they see see and hear y'all? Yeah, they can um, they can go to our fan page on our Facebook, Ronica and the Blazing Stars. Follow us there. And like you said, our YouTube page, they can subscribe there, Ronica and the Blazing Stars, Instagram. Also, they can go to my Facebook page, Ronica Bowers, and I, I share a lot of our um, content on my Facebook page as well. And if they want to download anything, all the digital outlets, we're there. All right. Praise God. Yes. Thanks, Veronica. Thank you so much. Have a good night. There's been days. It's 104.9 FM WIHS. You just heard where we featured on Spectrum of Sound, Veronica and the Blazing Stars of Mooresville, North Kakalaki. And uh, we're going to try to get them out here in Connecticut. And we've got phone calls. People were calling like, who, who is that? <laughs> A special shout out to uh, Elder Lee Williams, a.k.a. the Sheriff of the Gospel Quartet Paradise in Escondido, California. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't even know about Ronica and the Blazing Stars. So if you like Gospel Quartet music, that's all he plays. You can go to YouTube and type in the Gospel Quartet Paradise. God bless you, Lord. Willing, we'll do it again in a couple of weeks. Spectrum of Sound, where I feature uh, gospel music or gospel choirs or gospel quartet. Next Saturday, it'll be Jack Pike with the Southern Gospel. Going to turn things back over to Caroline Mazarski. God bless you and have a great rest of your weekend. In Jesus' name.